Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mostack, and today we are here with another main association of Math Leagues problem. Meet 1, October 2011, Round 5, Problem 2. We have a new topic, Geometric Similarities, which means we it's all geometry this round. And we also need to deal with similar triangles or similar quadrilaterals. Usually similarities in geometry in high school and in general, I think usually are triangles because those are the, are the simplest shapes to work with there could be other similar there can be other similar polygons like all squares are similar because they all have the same angles and the same side ratios but usually we're working with triangles because those are the simple polygons to show that are similar so hopefully you know you've taken geometry or you know geometry theorems if you don't then this might be a bit hard section for you so but it, a lot of a lot of the theorems that are taught are taught in school, so it shouldn't be too hard if you've taken geometry. So yeah. So problem two. In the figure, PQ is perpendicular to QR, so PQ and QR. ST is perpendicular to QR, so ST and QR. Angle P is congruent to angle O, so angle P up in this upper left corner is congruent to this angle in this lower right corner. PQ equals 15, so this side is 15, that whole side. QT equals 24, so this portion of this whole side, as you can see, QO is the whole side, that portion, QT, is 24, and ST equals 8, so this is 8. Find the perimeter of quadrilateral PQRS, and that's the whole thing. The whole thing is PQRS. What we really have to notice here is that PQ is perpendicular to QO, so there's a right angle here, and ST is perpendicular to QT, so there's a right angle in this corner. So that's two right angles in a trapezoid. This makes this a right trapezoid, so that's what we're really going to work with here, a right trapezoid. So instead of just doing my mouse motions and trying to show you things like that, I have made a very bad drawing of this problem, and I'm sorry that this drawing is so bad. I just don't know how to draw, and yeah, I'm sorry. And I know that everything is already drawn, and it would be easier if I drew everything as it went along, but my mouse is kind of twitchy, so that wouldn't really work well in a video. So, as you can see, we have... What do we have so far? Right now, we know that PQ is 15, as you can see here, 15. QT is 24, as you can see, 24. And ST is 8, okay? And as you can see, I've drawn the right angles into here. So those are the two right angles. And then, I first off, the first thing we need to do is draw this line, SN. What is SN? SN is a parallel line through S, and it's parallel to QT. The reason we draw that kind of line is because a lot of times parallel lines through points can really help, and especially in this case because here we have a right angle. So here in P angle PNS is congruent to angle PQT because these are corresponding angles. PQ is our traversal, NS and QT are parallel lines. So these are corresponding angles. So if PQT is right, then PNS is right. So this is a right angle, and triangle PNS, that's a right triangle. So, we know that NS equals 24, because obviously, this whole quadrilateral, NSQT, that's all a rectangle, because we have all four right angles, and uh, the quadrilaterals with four right angles are rectangles. But, is now that we know that NS equals 24, because QT equals 24, and opposite sides of rectangle are congruent, we need to find PN, because that's the other leg of this triangle. So, what is PN? Well, first, we, before finding PN, we need to find NQ. So, what is NQ? NQ is opposite ST, so NQ is congruent to ST, and NQ equals 8. PQ, the whole PQ, this side right here, that's 15. NQ is 8. 15 minus 8 is 7. So PN is 7. And NS is 24. So we have a triangle, right triangle with leg 7 and 24. So the hypotenuse is 25. This is because of the Pythagorean theorem, and I'll do this on Emacs here. 
So, um, Pn squared plus Ns squared equals Ps squared. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. You've, you, you'll hopefully know about it. So Pn and Ns are, are legs. So 7 squared plus 24 squared. And Ps is our hypotenuse that we're looking for. 7 squared is 49, 24 squared is 576, that adds up to 625, P equals PS squared. The square root of 625 is 25. Now you might be wondering, how do I know all that off the top of my head? In this ground, you can use calculators. You can use calculators, so that's how I know all of that. I, I don't want to do the math out because we can just use a calculator, so back to the talk. So now, as we've just solved for, PS, the hypotenuse, that's 25. So now we have this, we have PS, so that's part of our quadrilateral. We have PQ, we have QT, we have PS. Now we need to figure out these outside parts. This is SR, and this is TR. That's part of the perimeter of this whole outside quadrilateral. So we need to figure out those. How are we going to figure out those, though? Well, in th this is where similar triangles come in, because as you remember in our problem statement, angle P is congruent to angle O. So this angle is congruent to this angle. So that means this angle, as I, I, you can see, I've marked angle P and I've marked angle O, those are congruent. And as you also remember, S2 is P, ST is perpendicular to QO, which means this is a right angle, angle STO is a right angle, and um, if angle PNS is a right angle. So these are both right triangles with one congruent angle. So that means they have two congruent angles, the right angle and angle P and angle O, which means that they're similar triangles because triangles with two congruent angles are similar by the angle-angle theorem. So since they're similar triangles, they have similar ratios of sides. So this is going to be confusing if you haven't worked with similar triangles before, but it basically it's called CSSTP, which means corresponding sides of similar triangles or proportional. So as you can see, like the hypoten like the angle of the side opposite angle O, which is in this triangle eight, and the side opposite angle NS, which is in this triangle twenty four, those are corresponding sides in similar triangles because the angles opposite them are congruent. So that means that the ratios of all of the sides are the same ratio as 8 to 24. 8 to 24 is 1 to 3. So the side lengths of a triangle STR are one third of the side lengths of angle PNS. I'm sorry if that was confusing, but that's really the best way I can explain this. That's how CSSTP works. So now we need to find the corresponding sides. So for hypotenuses of right triangles are always corresponding. So here SO is the hypotenuse, here PS is the hypotenuse. So SO is one third of 25, so it's 25 thirds. And here PN is corresponding to TO because those are the only sides left. So PN is seven here, so TO must be seven thirds, which is one third of that. So we found all of the outside perimeter, the side lengths of the outside perimeter. We have PQ, PS, SO, TO, and QT. Now we just need to add them all up, and then we're done. So let's go back here. So we need to add up PS, SO, um, TO, QT, and that's it. Okay, no, I think I'm missing something. Oh yes, I'm missing PQ. So we also need to add in PQ. So PS is 25, SO is 25 thirds, TO is 7 thirds, QT is um, 24, and PQ is 15. So first let's add up all of the integers, so 25 plus 24 is 49, plus 16, that's 64, yes, 64, and let's add up the fractions. So 25 thirds plus 7 thirds, that's 32 thirds. Now let's change the fraction into a mixed number. So 32 thirds, that's 10 and 2 thirds. So it's 10 and 2 thirds. 
and 64 plus 10 and 2 thirds, that's 74 and 2 thirds, because we just add the integer parts, 64 and 10, and then 64 is like a 0 thirds at the end, invisible, so 0 thirds plus 2 thirds is 2 thirds. So yeah, that's our answer. The reason I did this out is because if I did it on a calculator, then it would be a decimal, which isn't really exact. If you do have a calculator that can use fractions, I do, and not on this computer though, but I do have a calculator that can do fractions. So if a calculator that can do fractions, that will be really helpful in Mammal. You, well, not too helpful, but it will be helpful on problems where you have fractions. Like this one. Although I don't think there are that many problems with fractions. There are some. Uh, and a calculator in this round helps you. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty good problem. Pretty easy problem. Pretty representative, I guess, of the section. I'm just going to scroll through these problems so you can see them. That might have been one of the easier problems, I'm not really sure. I think that was easy for me at least. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you like this problem, and I hope you like this section. If you're having trouble on this section, just review up on your geometry theorems. And I'm sorry that this drawing is so bad, and that I couldn't draw it while the video was going, but that wouldn't have worked well. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped you, and have fun doing math!